So I'm going to talk about hiatus hernias. Very simple, but we frequently get it wrong and actually it causes quite a lot of confusion. Now, just on a classification point of view, there are four main types of hiatus hernias. This is shown in this slide here, but really 90% of the hernias are type 1, the classic slide in hiatus hernia. The rest, types 2 to type 4, are different types of parasophageal hernia that you can see outlined here. Now, we often diagnose a hiatus hernia at gastroscopy, but actually it's not the best uh, method to diagnose a hiatus hernia, and it's not particularly accurate. The real issue with um, the endoscopic diagnosis of hiatus hernia is actually at both ends of the scale. We often call a hiatus hernia when we think we see a small one, when actually there is no hiatus hernia present. That's often caused because of over insufflation of the esophagus. And conversely, when there's a large hiatus hernia, we're not very accurate at calling that either. And that's because it's very difficult for us to understand what the rotational axis of the stomach is at endoscopy. So actually, does it matter if we uh, overdiagnose or misdiagnose a hiatus hernia? Is there a big clinical impact? Well, again, there's two ends to this. One is that when you're dealing with patients in clinic who have dyspeptic symptoms, um, it's very hard sometimes to sort of talk to them about their symptoms when they've been told they have a hiatus hernia endoscopy. Perhaps it's been overcalled. And of course, on the other end of the scale, we do see patients referred to us who, for their care of their Barrett's esophagus, when actually it's just a hiatus hernia. So this second one can have a huge clinical impact on their on their on their care and, of course, on their on their psyche as well. How do we diagnose a hiatus hernia? Well, there are really two steps. There is nothing that's ever been formally tested, but uh, particularly in terms of accuracy and reproducibility. But I like to know there's two key steps. Step one is, and something people don't often realise, is there needs to be at least two centimetres, if not more than two centimetres, of a gap between your squamocolumnar junction and the diaphragmatic pinch. So when you see people saying, oh, small hiatus hernia, if it's not two centimetres measured by your endoscope, it shouldn't even be start to be called a hiatus hernia. So at least two centimetres of a gap between your junction and the diaphragmatic pinch. Now, if there's a huge gap, it becomes more obvious, but often I find actually that alone can give you misdiagnosis, particularly when people over-insufflate the esophagus and can create a, a bigger hernia than there really is. So I like to do a two-step process, which is one, to see if there's that gap there, but then two, to go into the stomach and look at the hill grading. The hill grading is outlined on this slide here, and really what you're looking at is in the retroflex position, is there a tight pinch of the, um, of the diaphragm around the, around the scope, or is it lax? And really, you should be looking for type 3, type 4 um, uh, uh, on the hill grade to really say there's definite hiatus hernia there. So I think look at the, the distance between the, the, the two points and also the hill grade. And I think if you have both of those, you can be more confident there is definitely hiatus hernia present. So let's look at this video. Now, this patient was referred to us for the management of their Barrett's esophagus. And you can see here, actually, with over of the esophagus, it does appear like there's Barrett's esophagus present. But actually, when you then desuffate the esophagus, you can see suddenly actually what you were looking at was a greater than two centimetre gap between the squamocolonic junction and diaphragmatic pinch. And actually, when you desuffate the esophagus, there isn't any Barrett's there at all. And of course, this had a huge impact on the patient. So you can see actually in this video that what we've done is simply identified a hiatus hernia. We've then confirmed it there with the hill grading. So you can see now that on retroflex position, there's a nice big gap between the scope and the diaphragmatic pinch. And we've already said there's greater than two centimetres there in terms of the gap. So this is a hiatus hernia. This isn't Barrett's esophagus. And I think the endoscopic diagnosis of a hiatus hernia is tricky. It's something we get wrong quite often. And we need to be very careful about how we truly uh, identify these lesions.